So I want to ask you now. Give us, give me a few stories. I love your stories. Craziest story involving a girl. Craziest fight story. Craziest thing you ever saw. And the last one, if you can give me a crazy story which you've never mentioned before, ever. All my stories are very long. That's the problem. They're all like <laughs> oh, thir- yeah. they're all like thirty minutes. They're long. podcasts of their own. <laughs> they're podcasts on their own. What was the first one? The first one was craziest story involving a girl. I've told this story before. I think somewhere you have to find it. It was when I met when I first went to Romania. I was in a town called Constanta, and there was a girl there who I met who was truly beautiful. She was Ukrainian, and she, I tell the story properly is so long. It takes half an hour to get the context. Oh, should we skip that one then? Uh, no, it takes half an hour to get the context, but basically it's the story of how me and her were talking and I, she was trying to get information out of me and I was paranoid and didn't want to give her too much information, but she liked me and I styled it off and I worked out that she was working for the club and she was getting everyone to spend a whole bunch of money all the time. Oh. And I'm the only guy who didn't spend money on her and we ended up having a, a summer of love. But it's an interesting, uh, it's an interesting story when it's told properly in its, in its entirety. Yeah, because it's weird. It's, it's a strange one. Yeah, and I, I tell you what we should do. We I'll tell the overview of all the five stories, and then we'll in the comments to people who want to hear which story they want to hear the most. I'll do a nice forty-five minute explanation of the story in, in depth. <laughs> so the craziest story involving a girl was her, but she was a very interesting case because. It showed the power of female manipulation. In fact, I've changed my mind. I'm going to tell the story. So I'm in Constanta, Romania, right? I'm in Romania. I was there. This is maybe eight or nine years ago. At the time, there weren't so many foreigners who went there. I was in a club, and there was an absolutely beautiful girl, and I went over to her and said, hello. It's nice to meet you. You're absolutely gorgeous. And I start talking to her back and forth. I said, can I buy you a drink? Mm. And she said, yes, I'd like this uh, bottle of champagne. And at the time, I didn't have the kind of money I had now. So I said, ah, I'm sorry, I'm not going to buy you a bottle of champagne. I don't normally drink champagne. Uh, I bought this. Um, I like beer. <laughs> uh, yeah, I didn't say beer, but I styled it off. I said, oh, so said, you can't really say that, right? So you have to be smooth about it. I was mm. like, oh, champagne. We should enjoy a bottle of champagne together one day, but I'm about to leave. I just want to come say hello. So we'll do it sometime in the future. I, you have to be smooth mm. about these things. James Bond, right? Because I didn't want to buy a $1,500 bottle of champagne. Yeah. Um, so I styled it off, got her number, left. We we're texting back and forth. She seemed like a really nice girl. Absolutely and utterly beautiful. My standards are ridiculously high because I'm not a peasant like everybody else. I, I, I'm I only associated with women. I heard only blondes. I can have anything I want. Mm. And I kind of like when they all match. So um, I, I live with very, very high standards. So she's truly, she was truly beautiful. The next day I met her, we had lunch. And again, uh, she tried to kind of hint at this drink. And again, I, I styled it off. That night I saw her on another man's table and they were buying all this champagne. And I was kind of a little bit annoyed because I ca- thought I bagged a, like a really yeah. beautiful girl and she's she now nice. on this table and she's all the champagne's coming. So like, whatever, it is what it is, I left it. I still text her a little bit back and forth and it became this running joke. She was like, why won't you buy me a, bo- a single bottle of champagne? You're a man, why won't you buy me a, bottle of champ- a single bottle of champagne? And she was also in- asked, she was quite inquisitive. She was like, so what's your job? What are you doing here? Mm-hmm. She was trying to ask me lots of questions and I wouldn't answer any of them. I'd always style it off with a clever answer. Yeah. Like, what do you, what's your job? I was like, oh, I'm a priest or blah, blah, blah. So, um, yeah, we ended up becoming really good friends throughout the summer. And eventually she came open to the fact that she's there specifically to make men spend money. And she had a script and she said, you're the only, when she, she drunk a little bit of champagne that night, to be fair, she was a little bit drunk. She said, you're the only man I've ever met. She who opened didn't, up. Yeah. You're the only man I've ever met who didn't follow my script, Andrew. I said, what's the script? And she showed me in her, it was Facebook at the time. She showed me in her Facebook inbox. The man would get her number. They'd meet the next day. Then after about two or three dates, she'd say, I can't fall in love with somebody who lives far away. Last time, I've only been with one man in my whole life. Last time I was with a man like this, my heart was broken. And she'd copy and paste this long message. The guy would start begging for her back. She would wait about a day and a half and then hit him back and go, okay, I'll come meet you, but I don't want to come on my own because it's too, it's, I'm falling in love with you. I want to bring some friends and we'll go to this place. And they'd go and spend more money on more girls, more champagne, more, more, more meals. And it was just script and every man was falling for it in exact order and it was every copy time. and paste messages and every single dude fell for it just Same chasing thing. this girl promising her anything taking her and all her friends to whatever place she needed to go that day for the commission and she, this is like eight nine years ago and she said she was making like 20 to twenty five thousand dollars a month in commissions and she's some ukrainian chick. she's like 19 like her bought Jeez. her family a house Whoa. but like 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 literally in like enriched her family top off g the back yeah top g yeah she was absolutely amazing at manipulating but it just showed how stupid men were every single man was falling for the same trick all of it head to toe mm. and uh 
after that, we, we got a bit closer and she was, uh, we, we fell in love, let's say. And it was kind of funny because uh, we spent the whole summer together. I never bought her a drink. <laughs> I never bought her one. No it became a thing where I said, I'm not buying you a thing. Because you didn't you want to be one of those guys. Tap water only. <laughs> so I was like, I'll get you tap. You want tap water? And she was like, oh, uh, and made a big so joke of it. A joke, yeah. she, she was buying the drinks because she had, she had, she had more money than me. So um, yeah, that's the, one of the craziest stories involving. But you have girl. to stand out. So they just want someone to stand up. I think it's, yeah. I mean, there's, it, there's, it was going on for weeks. There's a lot of nuance to it. Yeah. Um, I'm not saying don't, I'm, I'm not saying don't buy girls drinks. In fact, if I meet a girl now and she wants a drink, I'll certainly buy her one. It was just a very unique scenario, mm. unique circumstance that kind of led into a yeah. story. But the night I was, the night she was going through those Facebook messages, it was crazy how quickly and instantly men will simp and beg and cry over a girl they've known for three days, promising, yeah. oh, we're going to be special. I'll take care of you. I think she's the one. Da, da, da. Yeah, bro, it's crazy. Do you believe in the one? I don't. I think it's just compromise. Yeah. Every. I. I there's. I don't think there's ever going to be one person on so the planet you're truly compatible with. I think there's going to be, you know, a few. And uh, if you have your life in order as a man, truly and completely in order, then you're compatible with a lot more people. I think that if you're a man and you're struggling to find somebody you're compatible with, that's probably because you're a degree. You're a loser. If your life's in order, then you're compatible with with a lot of women. Like me. Me, for example. I don't need a woman to mother me. I don't need a woman to motivate me, to tell me to stop playing video games. I don't need her to do anything for me. I need her to be happy, uh, positive, protect my spirit, pray for me, mm -hmm. maybe little things, make me a coffee, some kind of small gesture. But my money's right, my yeah. motivation's right, my life is right. And if she is associated with me, by proxy, she's gonna have a fantastic life. I can't fly on my jet and put her Alone. on an easy jet. Yeah. Like she's gonna end up on jets, yeah. she's gonna end up in the five-star hotels, she's gonna end up not having to worry about money, she's gonna end up in the best restaurants. Yeah. By proxy, she's yeah. gonna have a very fantastic life. So you'll, you'll find that if your expectations of a woman are for her to be happy and you have a lifestyle that makes her happy, a lot of women are pretty happy yeah. and you get along with basically all of them. It's kind of, a, it's kind of amazing how that works. It, only, it takes a very special type of character to still be dislikable in those kind of scenarios. Mm. Yeah. Whereas if your, your life is less perfect or your reality is less impressive boring, then, right? then yeah then you need a girl who's happy to be bored or ha and then it becomes harder yeah you know? but I, yeah. I don't have any of those problems uh, uh craziest fight story it could be street or in the ring yeah i can't i can't tell the story of uh all right i'll tell i'll tell a very rough, rough version of it um it's exclusive yeah i'm gonna miss a lot of details i was about 24 i think and I can't say why, but I had a problem with this guy and uh, we were arguing. Sorry, wait, was this during the kickboxing time? I was kickboxing, yeah. Okay. But I was also, kickboxing doesn't make money like boxing, right? When you're kickboxing, this is, I was world, I was like one time world champion. You're making like 30, 40, 50 grand a fight, but you're fighting like twice a year. And it's, it's, it's yeah, I mean, towards the end, I was getting five, six fights a year and I was doing better. But when you're fighting like twice a year and you have to pay your coach and your taxes, mm -hmm. you're living in London, you're not rich. So I was making some money on the side and I had a, a disagreement with this guy and we were kind of texting back and forth and uh, he stopped replying to me. He totally stopped replying. Cool. That was it. And I was like, okay. And I texted him a few more times and he, he totally stopped replying to me. And about a week and a half later when I was walking to my car, he tried to stab me. I was walking to my car. Even to this day, if I walk to my car at night, especially if it's raining, I, I, uh, I, I, panic a little bit PTSD. Uh, yeah a little bit i was walking to my car and i heard footsteps behind me this is one of the reasons i hate headphones and I, anyone i see in headphones is a fucking idiot because they you are so killable with headphones and you think you look cool with your airpods in i can sneak up behind you with a chainsaw you dummy like Your anyone who anyone who has airpods or headphones in is a soft target just distracted i heard it first i heard feet moving quickly and as i turned i've got a scar here on my hand we can see the blade oh, in my see. hand I, I turned and i took the blade in the hand and uh, if that was my neck, I'd be dead. Had you had missed that hand, he had, had his hand made in a different position? Yeah, I, I could have easily died. Um, oh I hit him, but it was sloppy, I'll, I'll admit. It was a bit sloppy. He wobbled, he took a step back, but now we're facing each other. But because I was bleeding so much, because my finger basically came yeah. off, because I was bleeding so much, I thought I'd been stabbed properly. Okay. And I ran. Um, but I, I could have been dead. And the only reason I'm not is because I heard him coming. I didn't see him coming. And that's, that's why to this day, if I, if I sit in public and I see somebody with AirPods in, I feel nervous for them. If I, I can't explain it. I get anxious. It's like seeing somebody touching a chain, about to touch a chainsaw. Like you're, you're like, whoa, whoa don't do that. When I, yeah, when I see somebody and they're like, 
I'm like, you and you are to, so killable. They're walking to the street like this. Yeah, like, dude, just, it's unbelievable uh, because I heard it coming. And, and uh, if I walk to cars at night on my own now, especially if it's raining, I, I, I have to check back and, and that thing. So that was that was a story. But that's not a fight. That's, that's the thing about the real world is that the real world is violent. And you'll often see that the idea of fighting is misunderstood. Even now in the war in Ukraine, I guarantee most of the men who got killed were never in a fight. You're, in, you're, you're doing your job. They never saw it coming. You, know, you didn't stand a chance. They didn't yeah. even know they're dead, right? You're doing your job and bang. Yeah. Very few were in a fight and then died. Yeah. Less, than, no less than 5%. The truth is about the world and violence is that there's very rarely combat. If he would have got me in my neck, I was a world champion kickboxer. How, 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 what, how, what combat would there have been? I would be no, How many muscles you have? Yeah, be, I would have died. Yeah. So the idea of fighting is misunderstood. The world is a violent place and violence is never fair. Yeah. And, and anyone who says, oh, I do jujitsu, you're a dummy because if somebody wants you dead, they will kill you. Will kill you. And I'm lucky there was only him, you know? Like nowadays they come in groups of 10 and then, yeah. then you die. Yeah, 100%. That's it, you, you no will chance. die. And that's why I am the way I am. And that's why I also understand there's not a man on the planet who I couldn't get if I didn't want to get him. If somebody hurt my family, I could get him. There's not a man on the planet I could not get. And and I know, and I also know there's men in the world today who, who are thinking we'll try and get tape. There are groups of men who wake up each day and they don't want me to breathe anymore. And you have to a a anticipate that and do your very, very best to prepare for that. The world is a is a dangerous place. The world is a dark place, and there are people out there that that are evil. And yeah. I don't think many people are actually understand how truly evil some men can be. Mm -hmm. um, it's inside of us, and yeah, that's my fight story. But I don't I don't like the idea of fighting, I especially know, yeah. on the street. I will do my absolute de best to avoid and de-escalate. And if it gets past the point of de-escalation, then it goes to pure violence for me. I don't believe in fair fights. I don't believe in. Uh, hey, bro, see you outside. I don't believe any of that shit. I'll pull the strap and just, just end all. I'm not playing games with anybody because it's winners, it's winners and losers. Yeah.